everyone, this is Dan. S&P 500 hit the recent bottom on October 12, 2022, and has been up 19% since October. Will S&P continue to go up, or will it drop below the October bottom in the next few months? I looked into the data from the past 50 years to check for similar patterns, and I came up with a very bullish conclusion. First of all, I'd like to remind you that I'm not a financial advisor, I'm just sharing my own analysis for my own investment strategy. Let's look at how S&P 500 has been trending. We can see from this weekly chart that S&P has been showing this upward trending triangular pattern since October. Let's zoom out to the monthly chart. We can see that S&P dropped 25% between December 2021 to October 2022. It then recovered 19% from October to today. The duration of this recent recovery is 6 months, which seems to be rather impressive. To understand how special this 6 month recovery is, I looked into the S&P data from 1973 to today. That's 50 years of data. First of all, I found 7 periods of significant market correction in the last 50 years. When I use the 16% drop in two years as a screening factor. The following is my analysis. I used the S&P 500 monthly data. I first identified the periods of market crashes based on the 16% drop condition. I then looked for the months when the market recovered more than 12% in six months. I used 12% because from October 2022 to April 2023, the market recovered 12.1% in 6 months. Here's what I found. This is a chart showing the 91 months out of the total of 605 months from 1973 to today. These months are considered to be within market crashes. In the beginning of April of this year, we were here, up 12.1% in a 6 month period. If you look back all the way to 1973, there are only six time periods when the market recover more than 12% in six months. Please note that the horizontal axis here is not a continuous timeline. It represents the seven periods for the seven market crashes we talked about a few minutes ago. The blue line is the S&P 500. The gray line is how much the market has dropped from its previous two year peak. For example, at point one here in 1975, when S&P recovered 12% in six months, S&P already recovered quite a bit from the previous bottom. The market then continued to go up and down a little bit, but it never got below the previous bottom. The same goes for point two, three, four, five, and six. There's one point that we should be careful about and that's April of 2002. When the market recovered 10.2% in a six month period during that time, S&P, however, soon went down a little bit more and did not reach a bottom until about six months later. Fortunately, this point here is at 10.2% and it's below our current point of 12%. If you like what you've seen so far, I'd like to suggest that you click the like, subscribe, and notification button so that you receive notification when I post my next video. It will also encourage me to make more videos like this in the future. Thank you very much. Let's continue. Here are my conclusions. We set up the analysis based on criteria outlined in 1 and 2. We already covered these two points. We then found that from the 605 months that we analyzed, there were 17 months or six separate time periods that fit the criteria. All 17 instances, or 17 months, led to continued market recovery. In other words, the market never dropped below the previous bottom once S&P has recovered more than 12% in six months. The only near exception is April of 2002, which we already discussed. This is why I believe the current trend with S&P 500 is very bullish. Although I have to caution myself that past history can serve as a reference for possible, I have to repeat, possible 
future performance, but it is not a guarantee for future performance. Again, I'd like to remind you that I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just sharing my own analysis for education and entertainment purposes only. Based on what I found, what are my strategies? I will continue to monitor the technical indicators, including the Bollinger Bands, RSI, DMI, and MACD indicators, as well as looking at trend lines, higher highs and lower lows, etc. I will monitor macroeconomic events, including earnings announcements in the next few weeks. I will buy index ETFs such as SPXL or TQQ during short-term market dips, and I'll buy stocks with strong fundamentals during short-term market dips such as ASML, SoFi, Microsoft, Alphabet, O'Reilly, or Novo Nordisk, etc. I will sell stocks and ETFs when market pulls back at short-term resistance levels. And I'll update my subscribers by way of my Twitter account. At this point, I'd like to suggest for you to subscribe to my Twitter account, which is Dan Market L, in addition to subscribing to my YouTube channel. For example, I tweeted on April 25th that I bought SPXL because of favorable corporate earnings from Microsoft and Alphabet. I then tweeted two days later that I sold three quarters of my SPXL shares at 3.5% gain. I'd like to remind you again to click the like, subscribe, and notification buttons. And as usual, I very much welcome your comments, questions, and suggestions. I'd like to remind you that I'm not a financial advisor. I share my stock trading strategies and analyses for educational and entertainment purposes only. If you want to buy or sell stocks, you should make your own decisions and you should definitely consult with your financial advisors before you do so. This wraps up my video for now. I will chat with you again in the next few days. In the meanwhile, I'd like to wish you the very best of luck with your financial investments.